And in the impact segment tonight is the federal government through the PRISM anti-terror program confiscating and storing the emails of Americans. That is a crucial question. Joining us now from Washington is Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky. Is the NSA tapping into the email system, Senator? Do you know? <laughs> no, I don't think I have an absolute understanding of it because they won't tell us. You know, uh, Director Clapper has said, oh, we're not collecting them. I don't know. Does that mean he's just not storing them? What does he mean he's not collecting them? All right, so you he don't said the know. same thing about phone calls. You don't know. Uh, the whistleblower, uh, he's running away from the authorities now. He says they are doing illegal stuff, and that's why he came forward, put his whole life on the line. What do you think of this whistleblower guy? Should we track him down, bring him back, and try him? You know, I think what's most important is that what he's talking about, which is the Bill of Rights, the Fourth Amendment, the right to be free from unreasonable search and seizure. So that does rise to a, a very high level for me. And then you have to ask yourself, he's practicing civil disobedience. Right. And many times in our history, we've honored people who have done that. I'm reserving judgment on that. I am worried on the one hand about people who release information who might get people killed in the field. I don't think this rises to that. I think he released information to say, look, the Bill of Rights is being ignored. And I think that, in many ways, is a noble gesture because he's having to give up a great deal. Okay, he will be we, on the run. You would agree with me, though, that we can't have anarchy and everybody deciding what national security secrets to leak to the Guardian newspaper, the Washington Post. Right. There's got to be some orderly process here. And if he does it, as you said, right. it's an act of civil disobedience. He's got to come in, explain it, and prove it. He hasn't proved it yet. All we have are allegations, Senator. This might not be happening at all. The prison program might not be violating anything. Well, you know, I think the question is, and see, it's a bigger question, it's really about whether or not when you give your records to a third party, you still have protection. Because the court actually may well rule, according to the court cases from the 1970s, Miller and Smith, that your records, when somebody else holds them, you don't have a Fourth Amendment protection. I disagree with those rulings and think we need to revisit them because your cell phone records actually can be used to trace your movement. So last year, the Supreme Court had a case about GPS, whether the police can tag your car with a GPS finder and track you without probable cause or a warrant. Supreme Court said no. I think your telephone's somewhat like that. They can track your movements, so I think they need to have a warrant that says you've been accused of a crime and there's probable cause to believe that we need to track your movements. But we shouldn't go through the records of 100 billion phone calls a day. However, if the National Security Agency and the CIA and everybody else says we need this capability to snuff out terrorism, I as an American don't have any problem with time and place of calls. I don't have a problem with that. And I think it is constitutional for the authorities in an anti-terror program, very well uh, defined with a FISA warrant, to do it. All right, not any cop anywhere slapping a little gizmo on your car. I agree with the Supreme Court there. But, but your time and place would be only targeted phone calls, which I'm not opposed to also. It would be targeted suspicion, and you're presenting a case to the court. When you look at every phone call that Verizon made no, but they over don't. three months. They don't. They store them, and then when they get a hot line, then they yeah. throw the hot line in and see who's called it. I, don't, I really don't but, have any problem with it, but I do have a problem with listening to the call or reading the email, and that's the crux of our discussion here. Right. Well, now, you as a senator, you, I, I just want to be quite clear here. You as a senator who is very interested in this situation, you don't know what the National Security Agency is doing, whether they have <laughs> culled these emails and are storing them in Utah or wherever. You don't yeah. know, correct? I only know what they will tell me, and that's very limited, and some of what they tell me I'm not allowed to talk about. But what I can talk about is what has been revealed by this whistleblower, that a billion records are being looked through, are being sorted and sifted through. This is a real problem. Any of the emails, or are they really all that really invades calls? the right to privacy. Is, are any emails being looked at, or is it all telephone calls? Right. From what I understand, what we're reading in the press is telephone calls. However, what I would say is by coordinating mega data from phone calls, you can also tell where people are going, how many times they call someone. There are a lot of things you can determine about a person's life. I would also say that under today's understanding from the Supreme Court, 
your visa record is not private and does not require a warrant. That to me is a mistake. I think your third party records should get okay. the protection of the All Fourth right. Amendment. And, and let's see how that legally evolves. But I want to know, I think you do, and I think every single American or anybody in the world watching me now, I want to know if what this whistleblower says is true, that the National the Security Agency it, is taking emails, all right, words the, on paper, and storing them. The Are you going to be able to we'll find know. out? Are you going to be able to find that out? Well, that's the question. See, the only way we'll know is if President Obama and his administration choose to be the transparent administration they promised they were going to be, if they chose to protect privacy, if they chose to release, even in redacted form, some of these FISA court orders. They don't. They're horrified that they, we now know that probably not just Verizon, AT&T, I think every phone call and every cell phone in America is getting the same order. I you understand, but you keep going Verizon? back to the call, Senator. You're on the Homeland Security Committee. I got to know about the emails, and I'd like you to find out and hold hearings and get them in. Are you taking the emails or not? That's right. what we need to know, Senator. Well, here's the question on the emails. The current law says that after six months, you don't require a warrant. And that's even to get all of the data concerning them. It usually is not to read them. So if we can take them at face value, they're not reading them. But even looking at your emails over six months without any kind of court order or warrant, wrong. I think is wrong. And we're going to try to fix that. I hope all. so. I, we need to get it better defined. Senator, we appreciate your time tonight. Directly ahead, Crowley. And